Hello, everyone, and welcome to this course on convex optimization, algorithms and analysis. In this little segment, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what this course is about, and we're going to cover that in more detail in the next segment. I also want to tell you a little bit about myself and my own research interests so you have an idea of where I'm coming from and what kind of things that I've, I've worked on. This is a course on optimization. Optimization is about trying to find settings of parameters in order to optimize something, optimize a cost function. So for us, optimizing is going to be minimizing, and that's why I'm associating it with the word cost. We could think about maximizing profit, maximizing benefit, but this is just a convention. For us, we'll be minimizing, trying to find the lowest point. So if you look down here at this figure, what this depicts is two parameters, say x and y. And we're trying to find the setting for x and y in order to get as low as possible, to get one of these two little points down here. So that is the problem of trying to minimize this function. This is the abstract problem in optimization, just illustrated with a simple problem with two variables. A more interesting problem, and one that we're going to encounter quite a bit and is really central in many, many areas of machine learning, is that of classification. So this is the classification problem here. Again, anything that we can draw on a two-dimensional screen has to be much simpler than, than what we actually care about in reality. But here, what are the parameters of the problem? They're what parameterize this curve. So already, we can see that it's perhaps a little bit more complicated. Let's turn to an even, even more intricate example. Let's look at this noisy picture of this cameraman famous in image processing. The problem here is to remove all the noise to the best possible of our abilities. Another problem from image analysis, you probably can't even tell that this is an image, maybe if you zoom in. This is actually an image here, and what it represents is, this is a picture that I took, and I deleted 90% of the pixels at random. And the challenge here is to try to fill in those pixels in order to make this look like an image from the natural world, make it look as nice as possible, as good as possible. So let's understand this as an optimization problem. How many parameters are there? Well, there's one parameter for every single missing pixel. For this problem here, just this little picture, that means that there are over one million parameters. You can think about how much more complicated that is than the first problem I pointed to, where there were just two parameters to search over. We could probably do that even just by brute force search. But you're not going to brute force search over a million plus parameters. In fact, if you think about the complexity, you're not even going to brute force search over four or five parameters, six parameters, no matter how much computation you have. In the upper right of your screen, you'll see a depiction of a very small neural network. Neural networks, the kinds that are in use, for natural language processing, for image classification. These kinds of problems, and more complicated ones, have hundreds, upwards of 100 million parameters that need to be set in order to solve the task optimally. What does that mean? We want to minimize error. So again, we're setting parameters in order to minimize something. This class is going to focus on not so much these particular applications, but rather the methodology, optimization as a powerful and general purpose tool to replace the impossible, which in this case would be a brute force search. So to replace this brute force search over these sometimes truly massive parameter spaces with something that can be implemented and can be executed reliably and efficiently. Let me tell you a little bit about myself so you have some idea of, uh, of me. I've been a professor at UT Austin in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department since 2006. My research focuses on decision-making in large-scale complex systems. So what does that mean? For the most part, I work on machine learning and optimization and statistical learning. Um, this involves a lot of work in lar also large-scale networks. And of course, algorithms underlie uh, everything here. And to give you a little bit more uh, flavor for what I work on, let me tell you about some things that uh, I've worked on together with PhD students in my group over the last uh, several years. One main area that has been of, of, of uh, prime interest to me 
is solving machine learning or statistical problems when there's lots of corrupted data, but systematically corrupted data, not just data corrupted at random. In other words, I'm not just making a measurement where there's my sensor is off by plus or minus something. But rather, I'm thinking about the setting where maybe I distribute a survey, and I'm interested in studying something sensitive, like income or drug use. Problems like this where perhaps people might lie in a systematic way, under-report, over-report, not answer, and not at random. Another setting along these lines that you could think about is recommendation systems. You might have a small set of people that coordinate with the intent of skewing the output of a particular recommendation system. Think about recommendations of, uh, <clears throat> recommendations of restaurants, for example. You may want to boost your cousin's restaurant at the expense of mine, which is across the street. Another area which we can think about as robustness or corrupted data or, or intricate aspects of, of, of noise in the data is, it comes from the fact that many phenomena in nature and in science are superpositions of simpler phenomena. So if you try to model with, uh, and find a simple relationship, you're just not going to succeed. You need to uh, disentangle this mixture. So this is another, another area that's been of considerable interest uh, to me and my group. Optimization with resource constraints. Of course, everyone is interested in trying to solve bigger problems faster with less computation. But there are many other computing bottlenecks that we can think about that depend on your particular platform. If you're solving something on your laptop, it might have a different uh, relationship between computation available and storage available than your phone or than a server. Moving on to the third bullet, and also I chose these to give you a, a flavor of, of, of diverse problems. I've been interested in epidemics. But what's an epidemic? An epidemic, as the word suggests, is something like an illness, like the flu or HIV that spreads from person to person, but many other things spread. Computer viruses spread, for example, but also ideas spread. They spread over social networks. One very interesting problem is trying to learn what these graphs look like and even being able to diagnose an epidemic. And finally, I've been fortunate to have many colleagues at the University of Texas that work on a number of interesting applications that require optimization and machine learning. And I've, uh, I've, I've worked on a number of these, including wireless networks, video and image processing, circuit design, and air traffic control. So this course is not so much going to focus on these particular things, and, and certainly not on the application areas, but rather this course is going to focus on the general tools, on optimization as a, as a general and powerful methodology for being able to solve uh, large-scale problems that really underlie a number of different application areas. We're going to go into more detail in the next section.